Hey, what's going on everyone? MBG here once again with another video. Thank you for taking time out to watch the content. I really appreciate all the support. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and discuss in today's video. So before we get into it, do me a big favor. If you do end up enjoying it or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. The first topic we're taking a little bit of time here to discuss is the surprise update that was announced for Returnal, a free update at that. It's called Returnal Ascension. And this, I think, was probably the biggest surprise that we got out of the recent state of play. I know that I certainly wasn't expecting it. And one of the things they are adding with this free update to Returnal is co-op. And we have a description of what this is going to entail. And so it says here, by accessing the Chronosis portal near the crash landing and in other select parts of the game, you'll have the option to either host or join a public cycle. Or if you'd like to share the experience with a friend, you can also choose to host a private cycle instead. Once your connection is established, a Selene from another timeline will join your session and your share journey will begin. In co-op, the game works in a similar fashion to single player returnal. However, if players get too far apart, they will be tethered back together. This is to ensure that the focus remains on cooperative gameplay and both players feel connected to the fates of each other. In one of the, if one of the players is downed, there is still hope. The other one has the option to revive them, but be wary that this will require some time investment. And in the heat of battle, you'll need to be mindful of the myriad surrounding threats lest you join your fallen comrade in oblivion. Aside from connecting player stories and building a sense of camaraderie, the fleeting comfort you get from engaging with other players can also allow you to advance in the game if you're stuck. Progression is tied to the host, so if you are struggling to overcome a certain boss or biome, bringing in another player to help may open your road to triumph. Client players who join to help will also get to keep some progress they make, such as collecting logs and xenoglyphs, and the more games they assist with, the more their scout rank will grow. So on top of adding co-op to the game, Housemark is also adding a tower-based survival game mode here called the Tower of Sisyphus. And here's the description. True to our arcade roots, the Tower of Sisyphus is effectively our endless mode. Players will strive to ascend the tower as high as possible. However, much like the tragic story of Sisyphus, there is no end to the climb and players are tragically destined to meet their demise as the mode gets increasingly harder. The only question is how far can you get before succumbing? One great motivator for pushing forward is a sense of accomplishment. Each phase in the tower will culminate with the encounter with Algos, which will also get increasingly harder as you advance through the mode. Unlike the campaign in the tower, players will also have to score a score to chase. You can track your progress and highest score on a leaderboard and compete against your friends and foes for the highest rank. Much like our previous arcade inspired titles, you will also have a score multiplier. Keeping this up and increasing it will be the key to racking up the highest possible scores. Your multiplier will deplete if you get hit or if you don't deal damage for a while, so you'll need to be constantly dancing on the knife's edge to ensure you maintain strong forward momentum. While there are secrets and optional routes to take, the tower is intended to be returnal distilled into an arcade action experience where the emphasis is on survival, skill, and focused progression. Aside from the new levels, our new boss, and some new items to discover, there is also an, an entirely new narrative content to be explored in the tower as well. We won't spoil anything here, but players will get another small glimpse into Selene's haunting past and gain further insight into her state of mind. And this is going to be available on PS5 as a free update on March 22nd. So a lot of good information about what we're getting with this significant update for Returnal. At this point, I'm going to ask you guys to let me know down below uh, what you think of this announcement and whether or not you plan to go back and play this. Next up, we have an interesting update for Ghost of Tsushima Legends. This is reading from PlayStation Lifestyle where it says Sucker Punch Productions has rolled out Ghost of Tsushima Legends patch 2.17, which adds a new custom mode option for Platinum Survival alongside crafting system updates and bug fixes. Players can now enable up to four difficulty modifiers and up to three nightmare hazards in a match. It's a hefty patch and it arrives just in time as Ghost of Tsushima Legends is part of March 2022's PlayStation Plus lineup. It's a bonus title and I highly recommend everybody give this a try if you're somebody who has subscribed to PlayStation Plus. Uh, maybe you played Ghost of Tsushima, you played the story, you really enjoyed it, but you just passed on Legends. 
seriously give it a try i think you're going to be quite surprised at just how good of a job sucker punch did or even if you're somebody who never did play ghost of tsushima i do think legends would be a good introduction to it and uh at the very least you'll get a really good idea of what the combat and gameplay is like maybe that'll lead you to go experience the story which is also incredible so just wanted to let you guys know about that uh, moving on we have an update on forspoken we did get a new trailer and so this is reading from gaming bolt where it says luminous productions forspoken is placing a very big emphasis on magic whether it's in the various phenomena of athia or the powers that protagonist frey holland can harness game informer recently released a trailer which broke down the different categories of spells but it also detailed some 20 different spells seen in an exclusive demo it starts off with basic attacks like a magic shot which releases magical bullets that deal small amount of damage with no cooldown it can be upgraded at level three to burst shot which is essentially a floating rock that can be thrown at foes slice creates a magical sword to attack which can modify into an arc slice for a strong downswing to send enemies into the ground or blast slice which launches a fiery lightning spear at enemies the latter then explodes outwards dealing damage bolt is another attack with no cooldown which lobs a blue orb at enemies. It can be upgraded into Fan Bolt, which sends out multiple arrows in a row, and Cluster Bolt, which sends a magic arrow into the sky that splits and damages anything below it with shards. Dart works like shot, except it's more like a knife than a bullet, and it can be upgraded to Pulse Dart. The latter can be charged to unleash multiple darts at enemies. Moving on to the support magic, there's Bind, which summons vines to ensnare foes, Prime, which places a magical trap in an area of your choice. Charge, which sees Frey launching at enemies while surrounded with magma tendrils. And Distortion, a green orb that explodes into a fog when launched at enemies. And there are even more spells. There's a category of spell that they're calling ultimate spells. And we only have one of those that has been described called conflagration which creates a lava wall akin to an eruption that deals massive damage in one area there are others like genesis cataract and tempest but we haven't seen them in action yet and so i wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about forspoken because for those who did tune into the state of play or are tuned into the playstation youtube channel we did get a new trailer and i thought that this trailer was much better because it really focused on what i think is the strongest aspect of this game which looks to be the combat and maybe some boss battles and i like what they're doing here with the spells i like that there are so many different spells and there seems to be a lot of variety here but um yeah it's just one of these things where you're gonna have to kind of i think watch it for yourself and kind of see how the combat is in action since they are just focusing on spells and kind of determine for yourself if this is the type of gameplay that suits you but uh, one last thing regarding Forspoken, for those who maybe missed it, it did get delayed. It's releasing now on October 11th for PS5 and PC. So let me know down below if you are looking forward to Forspoken or not and what you think about all these different spells. Next up, we're talking about Stray. Now, this is another PlayStation title that fans are looking forward to, and they were hoping that we would see more of it during the latest State of Play but Annapurna Interactive took to Twitter and they said, for those asking about a Stray update, it won't be a State of Per today. So obviously that's their way of saying that it isn't going to be part of State of Play, which we now know. And they said it's still coming this year, though. And that's the part that people are paying attention to because, you know, usually when you go some time without hearing from a game, people get nervous. Is it going to get delayed? As of right now, Stray is not being delayed and so hopefully we'll see more of it soon uh, but next up we are talking briefly about the dead space remake this is a game that i'm looking forward to and i'm sure many of you are looking forward to as well and so this is reading from wccf tech where it says last year ea announced a new frostbite powered dead space remake was in the works at montreal's motive studios and rumors even circulated the project could launch as early as this year but according to the latest rumors that's no longer the case. The new Dead Space never actually had a release window officially announced, but according to a new insider report from Games Beat's Jeff Grubb, EA and Motive have quietly reset their sights on a 2023 release date. Per Grubb, the Dead Space remake is coming together well and impressing people within EA, but the goal is to make the game 
match Capcom's Resident Evil 2 remake in terms of quality, which means more time to polish and refine will be needed. And it is worth noting that I believe he puts emphasis on early 2023 being the target for Dead Space Remake. And so I wanted to update you guys with this. I think that overall this is good news. It sounds like it's making good progress. As he says, it's impressing people within EA. But they do want to make sure that they get the quality right. And the fact that they're comparing it to Resident Evil 2 Remake, that is considered the high watermark when it comes to what a remake can achieve in the eyes of a lot of gamers. So I think that's something that Dead Space fans will actually feel pretty good about. But the final topic I have for you uh, briefly talks about Gotham Knights. We did end up getting a small update for this title. We didn't get a new trailer or anything, unfortunately. But the official Gotham Knights Twitter account came out on March 9th and said Gotham will always need its heroes suit up for an all-new adventure on October 25th, 2022. So we have a new release date. They're aiming for October. At this point in time, it's beginning to look like, as always, October will be a very busy month for AAA games. And so at this point, we just kind of have to wonder when exactly they're going to show more gameplay. But I know many of you are looking forward to this game. There you go. You can look forward to playing it on October 25th, but that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Again, if you did, be sure to leave it a like. Leave all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.